the huge areas of the world that have never been looked at by archaeology at all. Or if looked at by archaeology, looked at only minimally. Of course, the most important are the flooded continental shelves. And that's why Santa and I spent seven years of our lives uh, scuba diving all around the world. Nestled at the westernmost edge of the Saurashtra Peninsula in what is now the state of Gujarat, India, the ancient city of Dwarka offers a narrative that is as rich in spirituality and mythology as it is in historical urban development. The calculation is that 27 million square kilometers that was above water during the Ice Age is underwater now. The city's strategic positioning near the confluence of the Gomati River and the Arabian Sea played a pivotal role not just in safeguarding it from potential invaders, but also in bolstering maritime trade and fostering connections with other parts of the ancient world. This geographical advantage, coupled with the city being enveloped by water on all sides, either as a peninsula or a series of islands, crafted a natural fortress that was a challenge for any adversary to overcome. Most of human civilization has been organized around water, right? And as the water levels change, some of those ancient cities could be completely covered. We did a lot of diving in southern India, so it was, it was great for her to be able to talk in their own language to Tamil fishermen and Tamil divers and see if they'd seen any weird stuff underwater, which they certainly had. Moreover, the Gomati River's proximity not only enhanced the city's scenic beauty, but also served as a crucial lifeline for its residents. Dwarka's urban landscape, as depicted in ancient texts, was nothing short of architectural grandeur. The city boasted of meticulously planned streets, a state-of-the-art drainage system, and formidable fortifications, all of which were divided into well-defined sectors for residential, commercial, and administrative purposes. We know that it's been underwater for about six or 7,000 years, but the question is how long before that was it made? How long did it stand there above water? This level of urban planning and civil engineering sophistication showcases an advanced understanding of city management and infrastructure development, making Dwarka a marvel in ancient urban planning. The city's defensive structures, including a series of gates and fortifications, underscored the thoughtful defensive strategy employed in its construction. These were not merely architectural feats, but were strategically designed to regulate access and provide unwavering protection against invasions. Such architectural and strategic prowess points to a high degree of sophistication and indicates that Dwarka was a city that blended beauty with brains, making it a formidable entity in the ancient world. You're coming across statues underwater, you're coming across columns underwater. It's just magical in di diving, diving on an underwater city. Diving into the depths off the coast of modern-day Dwarka in Gujarat, India, archaeologists have embarked on marine explorations that have significantly advanced our understanding of the ancient city's grandeur and the sophisticated civilization that once flourished there. These underwater explorations have brought to light submerged structures, stone foundations, walls, pillars and steps that many believe were part of the legendary Dwarka, a city of immense importance in Hindu scriptures. The discovery of such elaborate underwater architecture points towards the advanced engineering and construction techniques of the time, hinting at a society that was far ahead of its contemporaries in terms of urban planning and infrastructure development. The use of modern technology, including sonar scanning, diving explorations and underwater photography, has been instrumental in mapping out the submerged city, providing us with a clearer picture of its complexity and the scale at which it operated, but the revelations don't stop at structures. A plethora of artifacts unearthed both from the seabed and land excavations near Dwarka tell tales of a culturally rich and economically prosperous society. The remnants of well-laid streets and an elaborate drainage system underscore a high degree of urban planning, indicative of a society that valued organization, environmental health, and the well-being of its citizens. Moreover, the variety of materials discovered suggests Dwarka was a bustling hub of trade and cultural exchange, maintaining connections with other civilizations of its time. This diversity not only showcases the city's economic vitality, but also its cultural openness and dynamism. But perhaps what's most fascinating is the chronological evidence unearthed through radiocarbon dating. 
we have to accept that civilization in, in India is, is, is at least 5,000 years old. The largely and correctly discredited notion of an Aryan invasion of India needs to be abandoned. Some artifacts and structural components of the submerged city have been dated back to the second millennium BCE, aligning Dwarka's timeline with that of Lord Krishna, as described in traditional beliefs and ancient texts. This dating not only cements Dwarka's place as a significant cultural, religious and economic center in the ancient world, but also bridges the gap between mythological narratives and historical reality. These archaeological findings offer a tangible framework to understand the evolution of urban settlements in ancient India, shedding light on societal structures, trade practices, and the cultural dynamics of the time. As we piece together clues from the past, Dwarka holds a special place in the tapestry of Hindu mythology and Indian ancient history, not just for its divine origins, but also for the mystery and majesty that encompass its story. At the heart of Dwarka's legend is its foundation by Lord Krishna, a pivotal figure in Hinduism revered across various traditions. The epic tales from the Mahabharata and the Bhagavata Purana tell us of Krishna's quest to protect his people from persistent threats, leading to the establishment of this city. It wasn't just a random choice, Krishna was strategic, opting for a location that offered natural defenses and prosperous living conditions for his subjects. Positioned on the western coast, Dwarka was a fortress against adversaries, thanks to its geographical advantages and access to vital sea routes that facilitated trade and communication. This city wasn't just a safe haven, it was a symbol of divine protection and ingenuity, blending spiritual significance with architectural splendor. The story of Dwarka, with its grand buildings and eventual mysterious submergence, captures the imagination, making it a subject of fascination and reverence. Dwarka, often hailed as the city of gold in ancient scriptures, embodies not just the literal application of gold in its architecture, but also represents an era of unparalleled wealth, prosperity, and architectural ingenuity. This legendary city, with its palaces shimmering with gold and precious stones, grand public spaces and formidable fortifications, stands as a testament to the zenith of ancient urban development and prosperity. The city's opulence wasn't confined to its material wealth, it extended to its sophisticated design and layout, which were attributed to Vishwakarma, the divine architect in Hindu mythology. Commissioned by Lord Krishna, Vishwakarma's vision for Dwarka was nothing short of architectural brilliance. The planning of Dwarka was meticulously executed, with distinct zones for residential quarters, marketplaces, temples and public buildings. This segregation ensured that the city functioned efficiently, with each area serving its purpose without encroaching on another. The residential quarters, designed for comfort and accessibility, were likely constructed with not just security in mind but also aesthetics, ensuring that the city's inhabitants lived in an environment that was safe, beautiful and harmonious with nature. But perhaps the most captivating tale of Dwarka is its mysterious submergence. The submergence of those sites is largely because of subsidence of land rather than sea level rise, because it's relatively recent. Legend has it that following Lord Krishna's departure from this world, the city met its end, swallowed by the sea. This story isn't just a pivotal chapter in Hindu mythology, marking the end of an era and the onset of Kali Yuga. It has also piqued the interest of archaeologists and historians. Their underwater explorations near the modern city of Dwarka have unearthed submerged structures, offering a tangible link to the city's legendary past. These discoveries hint at the existence of a significant settlement that might have gradually succumbed to rising sea levels or other catastrophic events, giving some historical backbone to the mythological tales. The submergence of Dwarka is often seen through a symbolic lens, reflecting on the ephemeral nature of wealth and the inevitability of change. It reminds us that even the most splendid creations, no matter how grand or well-built, are not immune to the forces of time and nature, this story, rich with historical intrigue and mythological depth, continues to enchant and provoke thought, bridging the ancient with the present and the mythical with the real.